Hello, everyone. This is Dupe Market. I'm just going to go straight into We have the Blossom Network. We've been operating since December 2012. We're all about reaching women with the love of the Father. We want to inspire women to blossom, um, raising transformational leaders. And it lost most of our, our members, their leaders in their own right. We have reverence. I do, uh, we've, we've had like three, two ordinations this year and one was last year. And we've had one of our members is a counselor. So we have different and even the ones we're all leaders anyway so so part of the vision part of what god is doing in our midst is raising um transformational um leaders and our founding scriptures is in Hosea 14 5 to 7 which says i will be like the dew to israel israel will blossom like a lily growing roots like the cedars of lebanon israel's branches will spread out and its beauty will be like an olive tree with its scents like that of lebanon those who live under its protection will surely return their grain will flourish they will blossom like a vine and israel's scents will be like wine from lebanon so you can see how god's we the, the source of our blossoming if, you, if there's a word called blossoming the source of our us being developing the one that's going to make us to to flourish to develop flourish and prosper it is god and that's what god is uh, god is saying here and activities we do on free seminars we do monthly meetings which is what we do we're doing now which is always every third monday of the month from 7 p.m to 8 30 p.m and then we run so and the way god has led us this year is we run some Mondays we run a time of praise and worship like we did last in August where we just come and worship and praise God with a worship leader. We run a prophetic school, which is really to go through the, the to, to study the prophets of the Bible. And we're still in um, Ezekiel. We started with Ezekiel and we're still in Ezekiel. And one of the things I noticed is as we go through that, the study the prophet, there's an impartation. I and and I'm sure some of you that's been that have been coming for the prophetic school, you will see that the prophetic is more is increasing, would have increased in your life. I've definitely seen it in my life. And then we run the woman community project with different um, organizations as well. We also run blossom retreats, and we had we started in March this year, and next year we're going to Malta, where we're going to have some time off on holiday. At the same time, we're going to have some spiritual some spiritual things done as well so we're looking forward to that is a time of renewal for us god is giving us new things amen so if you're interested in any of our programs please let me know um so the next one in october is going to be the prophetic school then november praise and worship then december 18 we're going to have another time of prayer breakthrough prayer meeting as well so today it's about birthing season. I really believe it's birthing season, not just for Blossom Network, but for every other person that is joining us, where people are beginning to give birth to various initiatives. And this started from, I had a dream in April 14, um, um, I because I have a dream diary, and I went back today to make sure I'm getting the date right. And it was as if in the Blossom Network, we're having baby showers. And, you know, and at the same time, while the baby showers were taking place, not that I saw physical babies, but in the dream, I knew that we were doing in baby shower that's what i saw i i sense out in the dream that the, it's like a baby shower in blossom network and i now then while that was going on beside in the same room there was like intercession i saw a symbol of people interceding but it was like when people two people are facing each other and interceding that's what i saw and i was quite um and that was the first time i'll see two people the symbol that i see of intercession in my dream regularly is two people facing each other. And I, and, and I know that whenever God gives us the opportunity to meet in person to pray, we will have that. And um, so that's what I saw. Just, I think after that, I had another dream that I was on a Zoom call like this and I was telling people that, oh, we're going to be having breakthrough prayer meeting and I woke up. And you know, sometimes when you see them like God, no, another assignment. <laughs> I just I, I I just ignored it. But in prayer, as I prayed, I felt God was saying that, oh, that what I saw was we needed to have breakthrough prayer meeting to pray into our God given that the breakthrough prayer meeting is about our God given dreams um and vision so it's really we're here to really pray and intercede as well that's what we're here to do and i know some people might say why do we need to pray into god-given dreams and vision it really go, if it's god-given it can it will come to pass but um in first timothy 1 8 
this was Apostle Paul encouraging Timothy as a spiritual son. Then he says, Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you. Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you to fight well in the Lord's battle. That's New Living Translation. And some of us, the babies that we're carrying, that which is unseen is that the, the words that's been spoken to you. Masete, Likente, the prophetic words. The, the prophecy, prophecy is foretelling the future or and declaring the word a message a direct message from the lord so some of us god has people god has given us direct messages through other people or maybe through him speaking to you he's giving you a direct message and that's what that's what here timothy uh, paul was telling timothy that even though you've been given those prophetic words you need to battle there's a war there's a there's a, there's a contention there's a time of prayer the amplified says this this command i entrust to you timothy my son in accordance with the prophecies previously made concern you so that inspired and aided by them so god gives prophecies god speaks a message for us. some of us the message might come in the, in the form of vision like i had a dream that we're going to be having, you know, it's it's birthing season. So we are going to be doing a lot of baby showers spiritually. And that's what we're here to do. So, so that inspired and aided by them, you may fight the good fight in contending with false teachers. So there, there are things that we need to go and our battle is not against flesh and blood. We don't fight physical fight. I watch a lot of FBI you know, them fighting the bad people. I, I'm watching a series at the moment. I watch a lot of that and I find it intriguing. And the, I think it was yesterday where on Sunday, myself and my husband were watching one series. And I said, I just said, you know what? Every time they kill one of the bad guys, the leader, because what happens is the FBI or the security people, they always look for the leader. They want to sort of get rid of the leader. Uh, but in, the, in every time they'll get rid of the leader, leader the next time a, another leader will come up, you know, and that is physical people. But even us, our battle, the fight, the, the, the contention we have is not against human beings. So it's not even demons that will die. So if you are praying for your enemies to die, the demons that are walking through them, when they die, they move on to somebody else. So that is why, you know, then the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter six, that the battle we have is not against flesh and blood. You know, uh, First Timothy 6, 12, where Timothy, Paul telling Timothy again, that fight the good fight of faith. Number one, we need to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Where unto that art also called, and thou hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So that's one fight. We need to fight the good fight of it. Then when you go to Ephesians 6 from verse 10 to 18, it says, a final will be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil for we are not fighting against flesh and blood so we're not fighting against people we're not here because somebody's blocking our progress we're not here because somebody a physical person is saying oh do no you are not going to deliver you are not going to give back to those dreams. the people that were the, the the beings we're fighting with we cannot save and it says we but against evil authorities rulers of the unseen world against mighty powers in the dark world dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places those are the people in the new testament we are not fighting physical people then verse 10, 13 says therefore put on every piece of god's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil then after the battle you'll be standing firm and it goes on then in verse 16 verse 18 says pray in the spirit at all times so prayer is one of the spiritual weapons that we have the weapons that we have and we cannot see it in the in the in the physical god can open your eyes to see your weapons you know the, the because the bible says the word of god is the sword of the spirit so in the in the spirit is likely that if you, the word of god is like a sword in the spirit and it goes on to say stay alert and be says persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere so it's important so that's one of the reasons why we need to we need to pray even when prophecies when you've received prophecy elijah prayed james 5 16 to 17 says therefore confess your sins one to another your false steps this is an amplified your offenses and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored you can see prayer brings healing when we pray for people it brings restoration then he goes on to say the heartfelt and persistent 
prayer of a righteous man, a believer, can accomplish much. And that is why we're not here to we're not here to play. I'm not here when I'm in prayer. I'm not wasting my time. Why? Because my heartfelt prayer, my persistent prayer, it makes power available. It, it will accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. And that is why at the beginning we ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. Our Holy Spirit, help us this evening to make effective prayer. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. The Holy Spirit receives, it can see what we cannot see. Sometimes in prayer, God will open your eyes to see the effect of a prayer, but sometimes you don't see it. But because something changes when we pray in the spirit, that is where eventually we see that there's a fit that things will begin to change in the physical. Verse 17 says, For Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, with the same physical, mental, and spiritual limitation and shortcomings. And he prayed intensely for it not to rain, and he did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then verse 18 said, Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the land produced a crop. Elijah, if you read that first Kings chapter 17 to 18, he didn't just wake up and say, You know, today I don't want rain. The Bible said in verse in chapter 17, that verse 1, that he prayed according to the word of the Lord. He prayed God, it wasn't because it was God's instruction. And again, in, 18, in chapter 18, he prayed after actually God gave him, he told him, get up, I am about to send rain. And that is why he engaged in prayer based on God's word, visions. And, and that is why I didn't just, we're not just praying on visions, my own ambition. And we're praying about God giving, that which God wants for us. Maybe a word that he has given you, a vision that he has given you, that which you know that you should pursue. That's what we're praying to this evening. And we can see the story in 1 Kings 18. It says, And Elijah said unto Arab, Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink. There's a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to, to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of the camel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and prayed. That's what he did. Before this, you can see that in, he got up in verse 18 to start to look for Ahab as God instructed him to do. Then that was when he got he told, go and bring all the prophets of, um, of Baal. And they had this show off or stand off and they could not bring their god could not bring fire down but god brought fire down it was after this he told him hey, go go and eat and drink there's a sound of and the abundance of rain, of rain and you can as, as if i don't know if you remember last month that's one of the words that god gave us that there's a sound of abundance of rain but even though that word has been spoken for there's a time of intercession like elijah went into intercession he didn't just say there's a sound he had to go in you know into intercession and that's this is the place that james 5 was talking about and even while he was praying and he said to his servant go up now look towards the sea and he went up and looked and said there's nothing and he said go again seven times so it was persistent, you know, imagine, go and check. That means it was expecting something to happen. So even when we're praying our faith, we need to connect our prayer to our faith as well. Because even when you look at Ephesians 6 that we read earlier, when he was talking about the weapons of our weapon, it said, take up the shield of faith. The shield of faith, you, you need to combine your prayer with faith. You need to believe, you need to believe the word that God has given you that as you pray, it will come to pass. And it came to pass. Verse 44, at the seventh time, then he said, behold, that ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. So immediately he got the sand. The Bible said, Elijah got up. The hand of the Lord was upon the anointing took him. And if you read further, he actually went further. You know, it was quicker than air. Then Daniel prayed another example of where we need to pray, even though God has given us the word. Daniel 9, 1 to 3 said, in the first year of Darius, son of Zaxis, a made by um the saint it was made ruler over the babylonian kingdom in the first year of his reign i daniel understood from the scriptures according to the word of the lord giving to jeremiah the prophet so the word god had already prophesied the word of god prophecy had gone through the, the the prophet jeremiah that the desolation of jerusalem will last for 70 years so i turned to the lord and pleaded with him in prayer and petition in fasting in sackcloth and ashes so even though he understood and some of us we've read the bible like you said prophets and i feel that that's one of the things that god is emphasizing when i was i was preparing for this meeting god is emphasizing the the word that has come gone forth that which you god has declared over your life some of us lots of prophecies that you know you're 
expecting to happen. And you're going to pray, as, even as we pray today, begin to have those things in mind, pray them into being. And that's what uh, Daniel did. And he said he began to pray. He went into intercession. Then there was a delay. Why was there a delay? We read of the delay in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 14. It says, and then, it, then the angel appeared unto him. Then the angel said, then one of the things the angel told him in verse 12, he said, then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I've come in response to that. So in the first day that I began to pray, God released the angel to go and give him the answer. And some of us, God is like God with sometimes angels. Angels are all around us. We need to know that they're everywhere because they're, 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 they're God's, um, the ministers, they're called to minister to us. That's what angels. And I pray that God will open our eyes to see. A lot of times, some of us, we see angels in our dreams. Some of us, we see them physically. I know. And a lot, and that's one of the prayers I've been praying for myself, that God will open my more of my eyes to see activity of angels all around me because I know they're there, you know. And it can be comforting. It is encouraging. Because sometimes when we feel God is not with us, it's always with us. I remember many years ago where I was going through a very difficult time, um, um, a, a man of God came to visit me and I remember as we, pray, we prayed we, just before he left, he prayed and as he stood up, he just looked, I said he said, Dupe, Dupe, what do you do? He just on my living room he said, Dupe, what do you do in this room? I said oh, just uh, this is where we pray anyway and he said, oh, there's a big, I can see there's a mighty angel in that corner and that angel has been there for a long time and it was really encouraging, I was like, hey, in this room I, I, told, I called on my children can you tell them that we have angels in this house so that it's not just that mommy is saying what she doesn't know. That was that encouraged me that even though some of us when it seems as if God is not there is there so there are angels all around us then it said verse 13 then he explained but as God sends me but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days 21 days that was resistant then then he said Michael one of the chief princes came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I've come to explain to you what will happen to, to your people in the future for the visions concerns a, yet a time. When I was reading this thing, uh, this passage again today, it reminded me of one of, one, one of the things my, my mentor, Reverend Celia, said about this must have been so important for them to want to stop the, the, uh, the angel from getting to Daniel. It was very important. It had to do with the future. It had to do with vision concerns. Because imagine for them to, it was a chief prince the prince of the Persian kingdom, the spiritual, you know, we read it in Ephesians 6 about the, 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 the people that were warring against. It was a prince. It wasn't just a small demon that was sent, that was dispatched, that no, there's an answer coming. We don't want it to come. So sometimes there's a delay because there's spiritual warfare, but thank God that Daniel persisted in prayer. So that's one of the reasons why we need to pray concerning promise. Then with the last example I'm giving is the woman in Revelation 12, Revelation 12, 1 to 9, say, then I witnessed in heaven an event of great significance. I saw a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and a crown of st 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant, and she cried out because of her labor pains and the agony of giving birth. Then I witnessed in heaven another significant event. I saw a large dragon with seven heads and ten horns, with seven crowns on his head. It still swept away one third of the stars in the sky, and he threw them to the earth. He stood in front of the woman and said she was about to give birth, ready to devour a baby as soon as it was born. You can see the woman was pregnant. Some of us were pregnant with those visions, were pregnant with those dreams, but there's a contention, there's somebody, there's a, there's a spiritual being that wants that, they do not want you to give birth to that child. And the Bible says she gave birth to a son, she gave birth to a son who was about to rule all the nations with an iron, and her child was snatched away from the dragon and was caught up to God and his to his throne. Verse 6 said, And the woman fled into the wilderness where God had prepared a place to care for her for 1,260 1, days. And then there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels, and the dragon lost the battle. So he, he, we will, that's why we have victory. The Bible says, thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph. Victory is ours. Why? Because we have somebody with us. And the dragon lost the battle, and he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. They lost them, and they, they, they lost 
lost on the cross and they will continue to lose. We all, the, the victory has been won for us. So we're not on our own. So I come to you today. Some of us, the spiritual struggles, the, the attacks, the things that could have been continuing is because of the seed that you carry. That woman was attacked in, in Revelation 12 because of what she carried. But God was with her. The Bible, so the enemy is after the seed that is the that you carry because it's a seed that will germinate into into the into the child. There's provision for your God given vision and dreams. We're not on our own. You know, I like the one um, the song that's Pastor Victoria Reza, Reza sang that we you, I have got back in. You know, that's such a powerful song that we're not on our own. We are, and I just feel that God is emphasizing to us we have God, we have the host of heaven, we have angels around us who are there to help us in Jesus' name. So even as we go into a time of intercession, and my my question is, are you in labor? pains you know for those of us who have children you know you know how it is when there's labor you know when you're in labor there's pain there's contraction why because the baby is coming and the reason why we're going to continue to do this break to prayer meetings regularly is because you know there's season so there's some babies there for now there's some babies there for two months time that is why we will continue to pray this breakthrough prayer Isaiah 66 verse 69 said the sound of noise from the city a voice from the temple the voice of the Lord who fully repays his enemies before she was in labor she gave birth before her pain came she delivered a main child who has heard such a thing who has seen such things shall the hearts be made to give birth in one day or shall a nation be born at one for as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? See the Lord. Shall I who cause delivery shut up the wound? See the Lord. So if you are in pain today, you could go contraction, you know, contractions come. I remember, I, I remember vividly with my son uh, who was born in October, you know, the pain, because I remember his birth was very quick. So the contractions were really, really, were, 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 really, were really, really, really painful. So when I remember when they said it was fully dilated, they said, okay, now you are going to push that baby out. But they did they just said, wait for the contraction. With that pain, you are going to use that pain to push that baby out. So are you in labor pain spiritually because of what you're crying? You are here today to push that baby out with the help of the Holy Spirit. And remember, we are here. The Bible says that in Deuteronomy 20, 32, 30, that I can't one chase a thousand or two put ten thousand to flight unless their rock has sold them unless the lord had given to them so we're here and that is why i saw in that dream that the kind of strength that you need is not by yourself don't pray don't, yeah there's a time for personal prayer but there's a time where you get in with with people and push out and pray and have that breakthrough it's not a time for you to pray on your own it's a time for you to pray with people for one shall chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to flight so we begin to pray just I want we're going to that time of pre, uh, intercession now I want you today we are acting as spiritual midwives for each other Masatala you are praying for yourself we're praying for everyone that is on, on this platform we're standing imagine that we're standing hand in hand pushing pushing the baby all of us we have god-given dreaming for the bible says, i know the plans i have for you they are great plans to give you a future and a hope and so their dreams their visions that god has for us and so that is what we're going to pray and so today we're going to begin to pray for individual visions and dreams so have if whatever it is have a picture in my your mind have the name of your organization your businesses or your dreams and that's what we're going to pray father lord we come only by the blood of jesus we thank you for your word as soon as zion travel they shall bring forth and so today we join faith with all my sisters on this platform and so we pray Holy Spirit even as we go into a time of intercession Father Lord we thank you for the delivery of that which we carry Father Lord we thank you for the delivery of that which we carry so begin to pray into those dreams and vision begin to pray that the will of God will be done begin to pray for divine alignment for everything that is necessary for that vision to be built begin to pray that God will begin to praise midwives people that are there to ready some of us we are afraid Father Lord we pray to every individual visions and dreams oh God we begin to cry oh God we thank you Jehovah God we remove every obstacle in the way of progress of visions and dreams. We pray for every ministry, every businesses, every organization that they will flourish in Jesus' name. The Bible says that high has not seen 
no hear hear what God has in store is only revealed by the Spirit. And I begin to pray today that you begin to reveal to every one of my sisters, oh God, that which you have in store for them. Masete lehando nobo sata la rabaki hanta imene kaka maka begin to pray that God reveal to you. Open the eyes of your understanding to see. You need to see it. You need to see it. You need to see it. Masha tala rabasa tala rabase. Ananda that God will begin to heal every spiritual blindness, oh God. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 that I pray that your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. I pray today that all our eyes there where we have been operating blindly, where we are operating in darkness spiritually. Father, we pray today that you open the eyes of understanding. You will bring healing to every spiritual blindness in the name of Jesus. Let's pray into spiritual blindness because you have to be able to see. The Bible says to me, God was saying to Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, ask that your eyes will be open. Your eyes will see. Your eyes will see so that you can possess this in the name of Jesus. As far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see. Masatala basak. God to open your eyes. That you will see beyond where you are, oh God. Masatala rabase telekantu to masse telehanda. You will see what God has in mind, oh God. God will show you. God will open your eyes to see. Like Elijah told his servants when he was saying, oh, there's so many people against us. But God, did he say God prayer? He said God please open his eyes. And I pray today that God will open your eyes. He will open your eyes to see that they that for you are more than they that he gives you. The angels are there to, to help you. I pray today for discernment for us, O God. Masheke Hunter, that God will give us discernment to God. He will open the eyes of our hearts to see. We will see what we say. Our eyes will open. Masata la rabakete te handa la rabasete le handa. Eleleko shiba la batata la rabasete le handa. Eleleko no musota la rabakete handu to busha. Father Lord, we pray today that you open our eyes to see. Our ears will hear you clearly. Masata la rabasete handu to busota yanda. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we progress, I want us to pray for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You know, I, I think that's very important. Um, people that are trusting God for physical children, we want to stand in the gap for them. You know, for if you know of any woman or if you are in that um in that uh, category, so you pray for yourself. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, verse 1, that sing barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Verse 2 says, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. Verse 3 says, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess the nation and settle in their desolate places. And so again, verse 4 says, Do not be afraid, you will not be um, ashamed. Psalm 127, verse 3 says, Children are the heritage of the Lord. And so let's begin to pray today that God, Father, you said, Oh God, sing. And so we pray for every woman, Oh God, that is under the sound of my voice, every woman that is connected to us, that trusted you for that fruit of the womb. You said, You said it in your word that children are the heritage of the Lord. And so we begin to pray to today, Master, their gift of the Lord. Ask God to give those women the gift of children, physical children. I must say, some of them, they bought things. Some of them, they, they're already ready for the baby. They prepared the room. They're just waiting for the manifestation of the baby. And so we begin to pray today. Kayan Tutu Masa Talara. He's done it for so many women. He's done it for women in the Bible. He did it for Sarah. Sarah Karaba Talara Badat. Even everybody had given up on her. Yala Naraba Setele Kan Tutu Masa Talara Badat. Hallelujah, we receive babies for our sister. We receive babies for them, physical babies that we've seen that manifested in this world. We remove every hindrance, oh God. We pray for their reproductive organs and for their partners' reproductive organs to begin to work, to begin to function. Everything will begin to function according to how you planned it. May there be rain of babies in 
in their house, oh God. People that have given up that I can never have my own child surprise them, oh God. Master, Talada, let them be a surprise, oh God. Let them rejoice, oh God. Yalara, Bakay, the hand that will come to them and say congratulations, oh God. There'll be so many babies, Shabbat, in the physical realm, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amasa, Talada, Masa, Talada, Masa, Masa, Talada, Bakay, the Mosha, Talada, Masa, Menene, Kandara, Basha, Talada, Basa, Talada, Basa, Masa, Talada, Basha, Talada, Basa, Talada, Basa, Masa, Talada, Basha, Talada, Bakay, the Mosha, Talada, Basa, Malan, so to Yan, Talada, Basha, Talada, Basa, in Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that God's power and his glory will be evident in our lives. You know, we, we need the glory of God. I don't know about you. I desire to see his glory. I want his glory to be manifested in my life because when we people see the glory of God, that's what attracts them. They will believe. They will believe because the glory of God will not just come. Things will happen. When the glory of God is manifested, things happen. And Isaiah 60 says, Arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of God rises upon you. See darkness covers the heart and thick darkness is over the people but the lord arises rises upon you and then and his glory appears over you nations will come to your life and kings to the brightness of your dawn. so i just want you to pray today that god people will see the power and the glory of god will be evident in your life it will be evident in my life that his power his glory will be evident in our life the bible say we should ask and it shall be given to us the bible say we should seek and we shall find oh god and so we ask for so the bible say we have the holy spirit so we have to walk in power. The Bible says in Acts 1 that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in all Samaria to the hands of the hand. And so we want to thank God for that glory of God that be evident to God. We thank you for the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you because the Holy Spirit comes in the form of the oil of the anointing and the water of the Spirit. The Bible says in Ezekiel 47, for the Fukuyanda. In the temple there was water. And so we ask today for the rising of the water, oh God. Ask God for a greater measure of the Spirit of God in your life. So that there will be an overflow. The Bible says as many as believe in him, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. And it's that same river that is going to go into the world and bring healing so that wherever you go there'll be healing wherever you go there'll be there'll, there'll be deliverance that's what happened with jesus and so we ask holy spirit that you anoint us afraid let there be a stirring of the water so god that living water that is in us we want to see more of it we can't just say we carry living water and everything is dead around us then people will say that do you really carry living water that's why we are asking for that evidence of that which you carry you go let it manifest in our homes. Let it manifest in our life. Let it manifest in our community. That your glory go that we go from one glory to another. The Bible says says as we behold him we're going to be transformed from one level of glory to another so begin to pray that you will behold him and anything in your life that is that is stopping you from beholding you ask god to remove it it might be things you need to deal with ask god to open your eyes to see what do i need to do that i may see more of his glory in my life the glory exists take a hand is okay hand like a hand the bible said there are many vessels someone to honor unto unto dishonor the type of vessel that you are will determine what you carry begin to ask God that you'll be a vessel unto honor. You'll be a vessel unto honor in your world. You'll be a vessel unto honor in your family. You'll be a, a vessel unto honor in your community. Naturally, you will be a vessel unto honor. You will not be a vessel unto dishonor. Masse telekan do robo shat talarabasa talarabase aramasa talarabasha talarabase te hanta in the name of Jesus. Basically, we're praying for things that can help us, that will sort of aid us in the manifestation of that which God wants to do in our life. We're going to pray for good health and resources because if somebody is sick, there isn't much you can do. 
you know so we need god god has already paid the price um first peter 2 24 says jesus himself bore our sicknesses and our diseases he bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we haven't died to sin by live for righteousness by his stripes we are healed you know uh psalm 34 verse 9 saying many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers them out of it so if there's anybody in any affliction we're praying that god will deliver them why so that you can go and be who god created you to be so that you can get up of that house and be who god created you to be galatians 3 13 say christ has redeemed us from the cost of the law having become a cause for us and so that is why with jeremiah 30 verse 17 say for i will restore health unto you and i will heal you of your wounds Hear the lord so john to say beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and that i'm being held just as your soul pray. god's plan is prosperity god's plan is health for us and so begin to declare over yourself that you are in good health yes sir that the lord we pray for every sister oh god we pray for every woman oh god for health oh god that god if there's any affliction you said you said you would deliver us from any affliction you say you restore health unto us. So we pray today for restoration of health for my sister. We stand together. We say we are whole, oh God. We thank you because we are the generation that walk in the health of God. We walk in divine health, oh God. Massa, concerning our mental health, we walk in divine health, oh God. Yalarama said, for we have the mind of Christ, oh God. Massa, talaraba, kendelehanda, laraba. You need a sound mind to carry a baby. You need a sound mind to nurture a vision. And so we pray today for soundness of mind. Anything that is troubling anybody may be moving in the name of Jesus. We pray against every difficult situation that is affecting people's mind, that is stealing your joy. We remove it in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we ask for increase in activity of angels concerning everyone in this place. We pray for divine protection. The Bible says in Psalm 91 that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Some of us we travel because of businesses. Some of us we travel because of ministry. Some of us we travel because of wherever we go. Father, we thank you for divine protection. The Bible says he gives his angels charge of us, oh God, so that we, so that in case we dash our foot against it, so they would, they would hold us up. And so we thank you because you preserve us in our going out. That Psalm 121 says that you are the one that preserves us. So I pray all for us today. We receive divine protection in our going out, oh God, in the ministry, working the name of Jesus, Masat, for those in Nigeria, we come, we will not be kidnapped to God. It gives every come of accident will be fused it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your blood, God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We're going to pray for resources. For every vision, we need resources. We need resources. We need resources. You know, and the thing about it, like, you know, I've heard a lot of men of God, express men and women of God, you know, God will not, God will always finance his work. So we need to make sure that we're doing everything that we need to do. Second Corinthians 9, it says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have enough sufficiency in all things, may, I, I may have an abundance for every good work. Psalm 34 verse 9 to says, Oh, fear the Lord, you is saint. There is no one to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack anything. Psalm 35, 7 verse 25 say, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's the center and beg, beg for bread. You know, one of the scripture, one of in my Bible reading, I think it was last week or over the weekend, I think it was uh, Matthew or one of the John, uh, yeah, where God fed. I mean, they were, the, the accounts are in different parts of the Bible. He fed at least 5,000 men with five loaves, um, five loaves of bread and two fishes and by the time they came to him they were like you know counts them because he said he told the disciples that we can't just send these people away they've been here for a long time and they said and the disciples said oh, it's going to take a lot to feed this people. and i feel that some of us the people that we're supporting maybe in our ministries in our businesses organization maybe your employees you are feeling as if god how am i going to cater for them but we're going to pray god said the god that multiplied five loaves and two fishes that at the end of that um, episode they had 12 baskets of things left 
it, that was a real multiplication. I don't know how God did it. He multiplied it as they were sharing it. It just didn't finish. So we're just going to pray into resources for our businesses. A lot of businesses for some of you are looking for investment. There's nothing God cannot do. There's nothing God cannot do. Some of us were looking for investment to invest in our business. So you can take your businesses forward because you have a vision, but you know you need money to activate that vision. It might be you want to open a new store. You want to activate. You want to develop a new product, you know. So we're going to pray. Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for that grace that causes us to abound. We thank you, Lord God. You make a way where there seems to be no way. Isaiah 43 talks about God makes a way where there seems to be no way and it's open rivers, rivers in the desert, new streams of income. And so today we ask for new streams of income, new streams of investment, new streams of clients for every businesses, for every ministry, for every organization, for every charity, anybody that is, that, that is a leader, that is leading an organization, even in our workplace, Father Lord, we begin to ask you for new streams of income. We ask for new streams of income in the name of Jesus. We ask for new streams. Give us new streams. That's what God is doing. As I've thought it is making a way where there's no way. He's making streams, rivers in the desert in the name of Jesus. Masata Larabasha Talarabasa Karabaste Masay Telekanto to Mashata Laraba. We ask for the new. I want you to begin to ask God for new streams. That's it. Ask God for new streams for that vision. Yeah, some of us you've not even started because you are thinking, ah, am I going to do? Begin to ask for new streams of income. New stream. That's it. Okay. Hunter, for my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Ask for new streams, new streams, new, new. Father, we ask for new. The new is here. The new is here. Ask God for the new. The new is here. The new has come. Oh, ask God for the new. Ask God that he will do something new. He's doing something new. He's doing something new concerning your finances, concerning your sources, that God is going to open new streams of income, oh God. Father, Lord, we thank you for new streams of income, new, new, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray for our family, because one of the things that can distract us, that if things are not well with your family, it's going to affect you. It's only God. So at some time, the enemy does that. He will, he will go after your family in order to distract you. You know, so we're going to pray for our family. We're going to pray for our children. And we're going to pray for our children. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 2 say, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delight greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Um, Jeremiah 31, 16 to 17 say, Thus said the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. For your work, the reason of your children shall be rewarded, said the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There's hope in your future, said the Lord, that your children shall come back. So we're just praying for our children because we're saying they are blessed. They will be blessed in the name of Jesus. And if you have any specific prayer point concerning your children, just raise it before the Lord. Jeremiah 1, 12 says, I'm alert and active watching over my word to perform it. So God is watching over his word that is giving you over those children. Let's begin to pray. Father, Lord, we lift up every child that's connected to us, all our biological children or the children that we mentor or our God children Father, we begin to thank you for them. We know you have plans for them. We know you're watching over your word for them. We pray for every child in the name of Jesus, that our children will fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus. We thank you because you are bringing them from the land of the enemy. We reclaim every child that is on the street that is not supposed to be there. We reclaim them in the name of Jesus. We cover our children with the blood of Jesus. No evil will befall them. No plague will come near them in the name of Jesus. Masata la rabashata la rabakasa. We declare that our children are blessed. Our children are blessed of the Lord. They are blessed of the Lord. We declare that our children will thrive in the name of Jesus. Masata la rabakasa ta la rabashiba la basete lehanda in the name of Jesus. For those of us who are married, I want us to pray for our marriages. And if you're not married, if you're trusting God for a partner. Pray for that partner. Ephesians 5, 31 says, because this is one of the areas that the devil also attacks because of that which you carry. Ephesians 5, 
31 says, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become flesh. This is great ministry, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Um, so we're going to Ephesians 4, 31 to 32. Say, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be, be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender at it, forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you. So we're going to pray against strife in our marriages. We're going to, because the devil comes through that, you know, some things are still spiritual. We're going to pray for more unity. We're going to pray for restoration of marriages. As many are desire to be restored back to their partner in case there's a separation. We're going to pray for, for partners, for those who desire to marry or remarry. Let's pray. Father Lord, we thank you because you instituted marriage, oh God, because you said for this cause shall a man live his mother and his father and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one. And so we pray for every marriage that is, that is represented on this platform. We pray for unity of the spirit in our marriages in the name of Jesus. We remove every kind of strife in the name of Jesus. There will be no division or there will be no strife in our marriages in the name of Jesus. We cover ourselves and our spouses with the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray for restoration. Yes, Lord, we ask to restore. We ask for healing where there's been trauma because of unfaithfulness in marriages. We ask that, Lord, you will heal every heart, every wounded heart. We ask that you heal every wounded heart. So, God, we pray for restoration according to your will and purposes in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for new partners, for as many as desire to marry or, des or remarry. Father, Lord, you said you, you place the solitary in families. There's nothing you cannot do. You said we should ask and we shall be, it shall be given to us. So we're asking for partners, for those who desire it, who are interested in marriages, that God, you will give them their heart desire. You will lead them to the right man or woman in the name of Jesus. Sakayanto, the kind of Lord, I have a plan of the enemy to derail, have the plan of the enemy to deceive them. We remove that plan in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against any woman, whether they're married or not married, will prosper in the, in the space of relationship in the name of Jesus. Ask God for purity that your eyes will not behold evil. Ramasat is important. Masete lehando bushata la kanto to mashata la rabasete. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So I think we've prayed, we've covered this, we're praying for divine alignment. Sometimes, a lot of time when it comes to visions and dreams, we need to know the timing. Like a woman, um, like in my, in my church yesterday, they were preaching and sometimes some of us, we want to hold the hand of God so that we can say, God, okay, let's go this way. You know, if you're holding a child or somebody and you are the one leading, but if somebody is holding your hand, they are in control. So we want God to be in control of our hands and saying, God, we say, okay, it's time to turn left. Not me saying, God, no, 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 it's left. Is right with Tony. So we're going to pray for you that you will walk in divine timing. You will walk in alignment. You know, it's important, especially when it comes to God giving visions, dreams, and, and all those things. Father Lord, we pray today for divine alignment that we'll know the season that we're in. You know, Ecclesiastes talked about there's time for everything. And so we pray today that we'll be able to discern the timing. We will discern the season that we are in in the name of Jesus. The season that we're in, we'll receive that discernment in the name of Jesus, that God will give us discernment that will be able able to discern in the name of Jesus. Masata, if any of us are aligned, that are not aligned, that God will bring us into alignment. I've got to bring you into alignment in, in every area of your life, that God will bring you into alignment in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, I ask that Lord, you bring us into alignment in the name of Jesus. Masata, that God will bring you into that divine alignment in Jesus name you'll be in the right place at the right and in the name of jesus you'll be in step with the holy spirit you'll be in step with the holy spirit in the name of jesus amen
Amen. I want us to pray into difficult situation that might represent mountains because some of us, we face situation because of that you feel you cannot move on in what God has called you to do. Jeremiah 51, 25 says, I may gaze to you destroying mountain. You destroy the whole earth, declares the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against you, roll you off the cliff and make you a bond out mountain. Verse 26 says, no rock will be taken from you for a cornerstone, nor any stone for a foundation for you will be desolate forever. So God is basically saying this is linked to Zechariah for where it says that oh who are thou mountain before the river but you can you will become a plane because it's not by power and I just want us to join our faith together and pray to any every difficult situation that our sisters are facing make a hand to the rules, that God will destroy them because God is declaring it I am against every destroying mountain everything that's come to steal everything that's come to destroy everything that's come to steal to okay, hand that about say John 10 says I have come that they might have life and I have it more abundantly it's only the thief that comes to still kill and destroy but god we thank you everything that's come to your life to kill everything that's come to your life to steal everything that's come to your life to destroy father we remove it in the name of jesus by the holy spirit oh god let it be removed and god says in this in this verses that i will be out the way i will deal with it you they, you will not they will not see any evidence of it being ex, in being ex, existing in your life and so we pray today let every mountain every difficult situation give way in the name of Jesus, a lot of things that I am told, a lot of people are not moving forward because of situation that is just refused to change. So we speak to every mountain, we speak to every destroying mountain in our sister's life, be moved in the name of Jesus, be moved in the name of Jesus, be moved in the name of Jesus, be moved in the name of Jesus. Masat, everything that is standing in the way of progress, Kanamasat, that they may go and fulfill their destiny, that they may go and do be good. God created them to be. We come against you in the name of Jesus. We come against you by the blood of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We prayed for those trusting. Um, so we're going to pray into mountains of influence. This came to me while I was, I think it was last week when I was just praying into this meeting. And basically mountains of influence, um, sometimes they call them spheres of influence. They're just areas of society, how society is formed, where there's influence. And there's seven main areas. So the first one is the family. You know, the family determines people's values as well. You know, religion influences. So that sector of religion influences the worship the way we worship you know some people worship the true god like all some worship the counterfeit and religion actually determines the way people act or behave and that's why a spiritual leader can say something and say everybody should go and commit suicide and they will commit suicide it's i mean it's happened before it's happened this year somewhere in africa and so we really so those are the you know and some of us are called into this sector some of us are areas are, is family some of us were called with to family some of us were called into religion some of us are speakers some of us are preachers some of us are reverends some of us we we we, we influence people in that we, we we speak to her to help people to advance Christian faith. Education is very important. So this is a sector where people are taught, you know, godly principles. And a lot of things are being, a lot of things that are not godly are being taught. And this is so important because this sector influences children and young people, both secular education, spiritual education, any form of education, this is it. So some of us are caught into this sector where we're teaching young people, we're influencing young people, we're teaching adults as well, you know, it, that's our areas, our mountain of influence. Then the media, you know, the media and social media is on this is here as well and you know the media determines what is newsworthy and whatever they determine so you know the regular the 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 popular newspapers here the moment they print something you they get your attention so whatever is printed or published online or offline gets people's attention and it can stir things up arts and entertainment influences how people celebrate how we grand influence influencing people what people listen to arts and entertainment how people dress nowadays is it just needs a popular musician to wear particular trainers or something and that's why the brands would go to any length to pay um, um influencers or celebrities so that they can just get money. So that's a very powerful area. Businesses is very powerful. Business, some of us say we're running businesses, we're running enterprises, because this is where production and distribution of resources, businesses employ people, 
So that means, you know, people have money because it's a business, it impacts the economy and everybody's finances. Government established laws. Some of us were politicians, were counselors, were in different areas of the government sector. And they determine how people live. They determine how much money you have because you're taxed. By the time you are taxed, they determine how much um, resources um, net pay, I call it net pay in the accounting world, but basically your disposable income. They determine how much disposable income, you know, tax here is about 20% after the allowance, but in some areas of um, Europe, it's about 40% or so. So imagine, <laughs> then somebody taking your 40% of your salary, is like how much is left? So, you know, those are the sectors. And I just feel that some of us, we, those are areas. So some things that the dreams that God has given you, the visions that God has given you, there is some of us, for me, I'm in the education because I run a charity for young people. Um, I'm in religion because of what I do here. Yeah, some of us, so we have different areas. And, and I know some churches, they, they, the, the way they want to influence the world, they decide that, okay, should we influence the family? Should we stay with religion? So some, some churches, they set up um, schools. And in Africa, a lot of, I was speaking to my brother yesterday, a lot of uh, the schools, the first schools in Africa, they were set up by missionaries. They came in with religion, but how did they influence? They influenced through the education sector. So that's how we influence. And it does work. It really does work. You begin to influence. And some of us, we call to that area. So which is why I wanted us to um, so we're going to pray for the gates of those sector to open to us because we are called in those areas, you know, whichever one you are called. Psalm 24 verse 7 to 10 says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, be lifted up, you ashamed us. Who is the, that the king of glory may come in where, where women of glory will come with the glory of God? Who is this king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ashamed us, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty is King of glory. So I just want you to begin to pray into those sectors that the gates will open to you. You know your sector. If you are not sure, just pray. Yes, Lord, I'm a sad that I begin to pray that the gates, even of the sector in family, so that you can influence people for Christ. You can influence people for God with godly values. You can begin to pray that God will increase your influence. It will open the gates for you. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Father, Lord, we pray for every woman that is called to this sector of family, helping, helping families. It might be support family. Some of us are social workers. Some of us will want to set up organizations that reaches that is rich that is going to reach out to family begin to ask god for those gates to be open to you some of us we have we have visions in religion in churches some of us is education you are a teacher you want to influence young people or children or even anybody adult education begin to ask that the gates will be open to you some of us are called to the media which in course social media masa that the gates will be open to you you really some of us we want to influence through the media that's where our vision is we want to get into the, some of us will act so that we can influence the arts and entertainment so that we can really go our vision has to do with that sector begin to pray that the gates of the sector will open to you because some people are there but we want to be there because you want to be the light businesses some of us are running businesses a lot of business people they have the power and the control investment you need investment that the gates will be open to you in the name of Jesus. Some of us are into government. Some of us are, are politics, are politicians. We almost saw to and it seems as if things are difficult. Lord, I pray today that the gates will be open to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Keep praying in the spirit.
Masetele Hanta, Emelisata Larabashanta Larabasata Larabasi, Masata Larabashanta Larabasata Larabasi, Masata Larabashata Larabasata Larabasa, Musoto Lurubushanta Larabasha, Masata Larabashata Larabaseki Hanta Yanta, in the name of Jesus. We'll soon close, but the last prayer point we're going to pray um, about light, and I'm going to share the map of the world. The Bible says in Matthew verse chapter 5, verse 14, say, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a, under a table. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is something that God started talking to me about. We are light. The light amplified, um, says we are the light of Christ to the world. You are not shining yourself. You are shining Christ. And we know John 1 says, God is the light. He is the true light. And that light is the life, is the light that gives life to men. And it says that the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it and so we want to pray lord even into the world i'm going to share the map of the world in a minute that you know father lord we pray that thank you for the light god has made us light we are the lights of the world where a city that cannot be hidden and that's why god is saying let your light so shine before men and they, that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven and so about say i don't know which area god has called you those are the it's still loading i think i'm sure yeah yeah i think you, you can see now so whichever area i begin to call those areas is it nigeria is it africa some of us canada is it russia so i can't show everything at once but i'll be moving it and so begin to ask god so father we pray into the united states we pray into canada we pray into united states we pray into mexico we pray into Brazil. Some of us need to go to Brazil. Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, Peru, Nikian. Those areas, there's a strong gold of of violence because of drugs trade. We pray for Colombia. It might be we need to support missionaries there. We pray for the Caribbean. I like to go to the holiday in Caribbean, but they need the light. The light has to shine. We pray for the UK. We pray for Ireland. We pray for Europe. We pray for for Portugal, for Spain, for France, for Germany, for Poland. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for you. In Ukraine at the moment, there's a war. We pray for Romania. We pray for Turkey. We pray for Cyprus. We pray for Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Morocco, where they just had a heart break. Uh, yes, Lord, Abbasat, an earthquake. We pray for Mauritius. We pray for Senegal, the Gambia, the Syria, alone, the Liberia, the Côte d'Ivoire, that the light of Christ will shine. Some of us, maybe God will send us there. We pray for South Africa, we pray for Namibia, we pray for Malawi, we pray for Madagascar, we pray for Burundi, for Tanzania, for Rwanda, for Uganda, we pray for Somalia, we pray for Ethiopia, we pray for Saudi Arabia, we pray for Jordan, we pray for Yemen, for Oman, for Iraq, oh yes Lord, we pray for Gaza, 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 sorry I can't pronounce that, I'll leave that, we pray for Mongolia, we pray for China, we pray for India, Lord, for Sri Lanka, for Australia, for Indonesia, for Malaysia, for Philippines, for South Korea, for Vietnam. We pray for Laos. We pray for Thailand. Oh, I pray for Japan. We begin to pray for Iceland. Oh, God, that our lights will shine in the name of Jesus. We pray for those cities to be open to us. Some of us, it might be your vision is to go there. Oh, Laraba say we pray for Nigeria. We pray for Ghana. We pray for the Nair Republic. We pray for Togo. We pray for Ghana. Bon. We pray for Mongolia. We pray for Kogo. We pray for Ethiopia. We pray for Somalia. Yes, Lord, Abbasama, for Algeria, for Libya. We cover the nation, the continents with the blood of Jesus. We say the light of God is shining. We are the light. And so we declare, God, we arise that our light is shining. We are the light of Christ that shines to the world. And so we declare over ourselves that we shine to the world. The nations of the world will shine into that nation. Ayanda, Lord, Abbasama, 
the Bible said the light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. And so we thank you for the light that is shining. The dreams and visions that we have will shine in those nations. Yalana Maset in the nations that I am to. You know where God has called you. Begin to declare that the light, your light, the dreams and visions that God has given you will shine in those nations because it's that light that is going to dispel darkness in every area of that nation. Lord, I pray for Nigeria. I pray for UK, Masa, for Africa. That the light of God in me will shine. The light of God in every one of us is shining. So we arise, oh God, with those dreams and visions, oh God. We thank you for the manifestation of that which we carry. The Bible says, Hi, has not seen nor hear heard what God has in store for us. And so we pray today for the manifestation of that which we carry. We thank you because all obstacles have been removed in the name of Jesus. And we rise like the army that you've called us to be. And we go into the nations in the name of Jesus. We thank you because we have the resources. We thank you for angels that are with us, O oh God. We thank you because the Holy Spirit is with us, O oh God. And we declare we're light. We shine. We're light. We shine. We hear to. Let's begin to thank God. Our time is up. Let's begin to thank God. Begin to just worship God because today God has given you that you are your birthing you can continue this prayer in your closet that lord call us when you are birthing that initiative call us when you are launching that book call us when you are you are doing whatever you are doing call us if we are able we will come father lord we thank you we thank you because high has not Say. We thank you because he has not heard what God has in store for us. And so we rise up, O oh God. We thank you because we walk in divine health. We thank you because we have all the provision that we need. The God who multiplied five loaves and two fishes to feed thousands of people will multiply the resources that we have, O oh God. We thank you because you are giving us new sources of streams of income, O oh God. Thank you for all the sectors that were influenced as the Okian Tutu Masa of government, of religion, of education, of family of arts and entertainment the people that you have called some of us you've called us into the sector and we thank you for the gates of the cities are open father we give you all the glory lord in the name of jesus amen 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 our time is up so we're just going to share the grace our next um session is october that what we're going to have is going to be the prophetic school where we'll continue to study the book of ezekiel by god's grace and i believe that as we go through the prophets of the bible there will be an impartation of the prophetic in our life that one there's no doubt about it god bless you everyone thank you so